What's up? My name is Welton King from Kawaii Sun Games, and in this episode of our Unity FPS tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to add a crouching mechanism to your game. Now, uh, for those people who have been following this tutorial up until this point, you'll notice that this video is a lot shorter. I'm trying out a new layout for these videos. Uh, please let me know what you think of this new layout in the comment section below, as I'm not sure if I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, but with that being said, let's hop straight into the tutorial. Kawaii? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is talk about what it means to add a crouching mechanism into your game. Uh, and essentially, crouching is just getting closer to the ground all sneaky deaky like. Uh, what that means is that there are going to be two states in our game. Um, the player can either be standing or crouching. And when the player is crouching, the player is essentially ducking down. This means that the player is slower, harder to hit, and more accurate. Now this, of course, is optional. Uh, and the flow of this mechanism or this mechanic of crouching is the player is going to press a key, usually control, and when the player presses that key, the orientation of the player will alternate. They'll go from standing to crouching or from crouching to standing. So the things that we have to do, and the reason why I'm having this, I'm showing this to-do list is so that if your game is different from the game that I'm working on, you have a general idea of what to do. Um, we're going to want to detect if the crouch key has been pressed. Uh, we're going to create a function to alternate between standing and crouching uh, and vice versa so that once the crouch key is pressed we go into that function and if you're making a multiplayer game you're going to want to make that function an rpc which means it can be sent over the network and you're going to want to send it over the network when the crouch key is pressed so that's that's fairly simple uh, then, then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to adjust the camera height based on whether the player is standing or crouching. If the player is crouching, we want the camera to be closer to the ground. And if the player is standing, we want them to be further away from the ground. And this is the exact same thing for our weapon height. Um, with those two things being said, we're also going to want to adjust the movement speed. You don't want players who are crouched to move at the same speed as players who aren't crouched. Uh, as this basically gets rid of the incentive for standing um, so just make sure that moving when crouched is slower than when you're uncrouched also you're going to want to adjust all other relevant variables i have this line in here because these are kind of everything up to this point is kind of necessary no matter what fps project you're working on whereas uh, what i mean by other relevant variables is this is all optional stuff this is how you uh, just add once you've added your crouching mechanic you need to make sure that it fits well into your game so that includes going and adjusting your head bob if you have head bobbing uh, going and adjusting your accuracy if that's what you if you want the accuracy to be adjusted i actually will not be covering accuracy in this video uh, and just any other variables that you want to be affected by crouching. Uh, for example, if you want some, if you want someone to get more stamina while they're crouching versus when they're standing, then this is where you, this is what this line is encompassing. Uh, then we're also going to want to force some states. So if the player is running or jumping, we want to force the player to stand up. We don't want the player to be able to run while crouching. We also don't want to be able to uh, make the player jump while crouching. And we also talking about forcing states we want to force crouching if sliding so if our player is exiting the slide we want to make sure that our player is crouched uh, and then the last but not least we want to swap the colliders because obviously if our player is crouching we don't want them to be <laughs> we don't want another player uh, on a multiplayer um, game to shoot at the player like they're standing and still hit them uh, a good way to show this is let me pull up paint and very simply, let's say you have a standing player and then you have a crouching player. Um, we don't want the uh, we don't want shots here hurting a crouched player because their collider still looks like this. So what you want to do is you actually want to switch from this collider to this collider. And you, if you have animations already in your game, your animation and like your colliders are attached to your um, animated object, the animated player, then this isn't so much, you don't actually need to worry about this bit. But if, for example, like in our game right now, our players are just capsules, um, we're going to want to actually switch what capsule other players see, depending on whether or not you are crouching or not, especially uh, the colliders. So. Now that we uh, understand kind of the mechanic behind crouching, what all needs to be done, I'm going to go into the script and talk about um, what all has changed and how we get that to kind of appear and how I've done it in this project. So 
uh, I created a couple variables. I created a crouch modifier variable, and this is going to adjust player speed when they're crouched. So this is less than one, because uh, I multiply it by speed. And then, then I've created these four variables down here. So slide amount and crouch amount. Um, crouch amount is just how much we want the, the camera to go down from, from when the player is standing versus, versus when the player is standing. And same thing for sliding. So this is uh, pertaining to a tutorial from before. I just created the same variable for sliding so that I could have um, uh, you know, parallel structure. And then here we have the standing collider and crouching collider. So this is where you would actually drag the different colliders that you want to enable and disable based on whether the character is crouching or not. And then we go into our update function because crouching is a discrete um, action, a discrete mechanic. So you do not want it in fixed update. And then what I do from there is in our control section, I've added a key detect for the crouch. So you'll see that in this example, I'm actually using left control and right control. So if the player presses down, presses the key down, left control or right control, they will, crouch will be equal to true. And then I've added a new state, is crouching. So uh, is crouching is based on whether or not the crouch key has been pressed. If you are not sprinting, you are not trying to jump and you are grounded because obviously you don't want to be able to crouch if you're in the air. Uh, unless you know unless you want to do that that is optional you can you can definitely add that if you'd like <laughs> um, you'll also notice that I added a change to is grounded um, I made the ray cast go a little bit further you might have to do the same if you notice that when you switch between the standing and crouching colliders that uh, you can no longer jump or exit your crouch you might need to extend your grounded ray cast a little bit further Next, you'll notice I added a crouching section, which is fairly simple. All I did was if is crouching, which takes into consideration all these variables. So if is crouching, which means we're trying to crouch and we are able to, uh, then we are going to send the RPC set crouch, which is a function I will show you later down here, uh, right here, set crouch. We're going to send that RPC over the network. Um, we're going to send in not crouch. This is the equivalent of saying set crouch, not crouch. Um, but this is just, in, instead of doing it like this, I'm sending it over the network. And essentially why I'm sending not crouched as the parameter is this alternates. So if crouched is equal to true, this will send false um, whenever you press the crouch key, which means that if you're crouching and you press the crouch key, you'll stand. And if you're standing and you press the crouch key, you will crouch. Then we move on to the jumping section. Um, this is where uh, I was talking about the four states. So if we're jumping, so, um, and we are crouched, then we want to get out of that crouch. So you'll notice instead of sending in not crouched, I send false, which means that if we're jumping and we are crouched, make sure that we turn off that crouch. We wanna, we wanna stand. And that's when, where we go back to this whole idea of forcing a state. So force stand up if running or jumping. Um, then I adjusted our head bob section as well. So all I did was I added in a section for crouching um, right under the section for walking. So I checked to see uh, walking now includes if we are not crouched and then crouching includes if we are crouched. So else if crouched, then uh, crouching. And then for here, all I did was I copied the walking head bob movement, right? and then I just slowed it down and uh, I decreased the variables here a little bit. So I decreased them to 0 0.02 instead of 0 0.035. Um, which reminds me actually, this crouched variable, I haven't, uh, this was not, I did not show you guys this. Um, I did have to add in a crouched variable. This is what we alternate between when we call set crouch. Uh, Cause up here you'll, or down here you'll notice that we have crouch and we have is crouching. Uh, the actual variable crouch duh comes from our set crouch function, which we are just about to get to. Just bear with me. Uh, and then here in our movement script, uh, or in our movement section, and this is in our fixed update portion of our script, you'll notice that uh, because, and the reason why it, we're here is because we're adjusting movement speed. And uh, so what we're going to do here is if we are crouched, um, uh, this is, of course, this is where we're forcing out because if we're sprinting and we're crouched, then get out of that crouch. Uh, force our player to stand up. And then otherwise, if we are crouched and we are walking and we're crouched, then set our um, adjustment speed modifier to our crouch modifier. So we're going to adjust our speed by that crouch modifier amount, which 
like I was telling you, my crouch modifier is going to be less than one, so that the speed is slower than when you're standing up. All right, and then the last part before we jump into this function is the last force that we do, and that forced thing that we do is we force to crouch once we slide. So if is sliding, this is where we set all our slide variables. I also added if we are not crouched yet, then make sure that we go into a crouch. Um, what this does is it just makes sure that once you exit the slide, you'll be crouched. You'll also notice here that um, the weapon parent current position, uh, this is for people who have been following tutorials up until this point. Um, for the slide, we make sure that we adjust it. This is where you see the slide amount coming in as well, just so you, just so that you see it. Um, we make sure that we adjust the slide amount by, um, we adjust the height of our weapon by our slide amount minus our crouch amount. Because since we're going to be entering the crouch, um, our camera is automatically going to go to the crouch amount height. And then we want to adjust that even more by, by uh, adding in that slide amount height. So we do slide amount minus crouch amount. I know this is a lot. I'm sorry, uh, but I wanted to make these videos a lot faster. So I hope that what you'll do is you'll watch it once, get an idea of what's going on, then watch it again. And then that way you can get a full thorough understanding of the entire script and how it works. And of course, you can also go check out our GitHub uh, and look at the script from there and update your version of the tutorial as well. And so uh, also in our camera stuff, you'll notice that um, we have, if we're sliding, once again, I'm just I'm using slide amount instead of some random variable. And then here, um, when we're not sliding, this is what adjusts our camera position. So if we're crouched, we're going to lerp our normal cam position to our crouched amount um, versus our standard amount. So what you'll see is if crouched, then origin plus vector three dot down times crouch amount. Whereas if we're not crouched, it's just at the origin. So what this is doing is if we're crouched, we're gonna move that camera closer down to the ground based on whatever our crouch amount variable is. Now finally, the function that does it all, the set crouch function. And you'll notice that we have a pun RPC tag right above it. Uh, and this is so that we can, of course, send this over the network. Set crouch, it has uh, a parameter P underscore state. And this is whether or not we are trying to crouch or not crouch. And then I have a little uh, safeguard here so that if you if crouched is equal to the state already, then we just return. Otherwise, uh, then our crouch is going to be equal to that new state. And then if we are crouched uh, now, so like if we call set crouch and we are going into the crouch state, then we're going to set our colli our standing collider equal to false. This is going to turn off the standing um, collider. And then we're going to show our crouching collider. Uh, and then we're going to set that weapon parent current position to the crouch amount. Um, what this does is it moves our weapon down closer to the ground versus up here, we're moving our camera down. This is moving our weapon down. And then uh, otherwise, so this is if we're going into the crouch, if we're leaving the crouch, then of course we're gonna do the exact opposite stuff. So we're going to, we're gonna set the standing collider equal to true. We're going to hide our crouching collider and then we're going to then um, we're going to then actually add back. So it's minus equals vector three dot down. So we're actually going up the crouch amount. So here we're going down the crouch amount. Here we're going up the crouch amount. That way, when you stand up, the camera or the weapon returns back to origin position. Um, with all that being said, we can save this and we can go into Unity and we can run it. Ooh first before you run and you always got to make sure you do because I always forget to do this make sure you set your variables um, so you're going to want to set your slide amount your crouch amount so from for me personally it was 0.75 and 0.5 you're also going to want to set your crouch modifier remember your crouch modifier is the amount of speed that you're going to adjust based on whether you're crouching so minus half standing speed um, and then slide amount is how far you want the camera and weapon to go down when you slide. Crouch amount is how far you want the camera and weapon to go down when you crouch. Uh, also, you're going to want to set up your collider. So you'll see I have a standing and crouching collider here. Uh, I put them in under design. And what you'll notice is that they are now the capsules and the capsule collider that um, show. So if I have the standing collider seen, it looks like our normal capsule. If I show the crouching collider, it is just um, 
the same as our original capsule, just uh, half that size. And you'll notice the collider is also half the size. If you can see that green kind of outline or whatever. And the way I did this was um, your capsule and capsule collider will be on your player. I just control C the player and then went into design and then control V the player, deleted everything from inside here. Then from here, I got rid of all of these scripts. So starting from the bottom, just remove all of these components. Get rid of the rigged body. And then you should still have your capsule. Um, you're gonna have your capsule collider, your mesh render, and then your capsule on the player. And then from there, I just named it to standing, made another one called crouching, and made sure that their bottoms aligned. You wanna make sure that the bottoms of both of these capsules are around the same position. And then of course the last thing I did was I got rid of the capsule collider and capsule mesh renderer from the player. So you notice that those are no longer on my player. Once all of that is done, <laughs> crouching is quite the endeavor. <laughs> Once all that's done, we can play it, run it, and make sure that it works how we want it to work. So here we go, we're getting into a match. You can see them sprinting. And then here, I'm gonna show the shadow as well. You can see that when I crouch, the gun goes down, the camera goes down, and you can notice that the, um, there we go. you'll notice that the shadow actually changes height as well. And there we go. And once I slide, I enter the, I'm still, I'm still crouched, you'll notice. And then if I'm crouched and I jump, I exit the crouch. And then if I'm crouched and I run, I also exit the crouch. And if I'm playing online, other players would actually have to shoot at the smaller capsule in order to hit me. And that smaller capsule is synced over the network, so when I do crouch, they'll see that I'm actually a smaller capsule, and they'll know I'm crouched. All right, that's, that's it for this tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and jump straight back to the webcam view so we can get personal again. All right, I know that was a lot. Um, especially since crouching is such a, there's a lot to it. It's not necessarily difficult to program, but there are a lot of steps in it. Um, so this, honestly, that system took me like 50 minutes to program. Uh, so making that video would have been ridiculous anyways. So I'm hoping that this was a little bit uh, more put together and it's gonna be harder to understand, but you can always go check out our GitHub in the description below. You can also join our Discord server to ask any questions and I will be there to help and so will any members in our community if they can. Um, and really, <laughs> really that's part of making games is things are gonna take a long time and be really hard to understand. But I hope that this video helped you a little bit. Um, and. Once again, you can always go check out that GitHub, and I'm also going to leave a link to the um, to the checklist, the crouching like document that I wrote as well, so that you can use that and look at that uh, to help you while you're making your crouching system. Other than that, if you like this video and you learned something, you should definitely give us a thumbs up and subscribe as it helps my channel tremendously. I'm trying to currently get to 1,000 subscribers and <laughs> we're almost there, about 60, 65% of the way there. Um, but other than that, take it easy, have a great rest of your day. Bye.